A famous Chinese saying in depicting the art of combat states, the hands are like swinging doors, the feet are the real weapons. Capable of generating tremendous force, the legs are the most powerful natural weapons a human being possesses for the defense of his life. Perhaps few men have known this better than Korean Taekwondo master Hwang Jung Lee. six primary areas of the foot that may be utilized as weapons, the ball of the foot is perhaps the most well known. Here we see it used in frontal position against the solar plexus. With the foot cocked perpendicular to the lower leg, it may also be used to strike horizontally. The second weapon is the instep. At the point of contact, the toes are held extended and there is tension felt in the Achilles tendon. The back of the heel is the third weapon. To be used effectively, the foot must be held in this position. The fourth weapon is the inside ankle. While striking, tension should be felt just above the foot's arch. The fifth weapon is the outside ankle, the hardened bone of which is used in striking an opponent. The sixth and final weapon is the back knife edge of the foot, which follows the natural line of support extending down the leg. The straight foot position is formed by outstretching the feet while bending back the toes at the same time. The side foot position, however, is fixed with the feet resting perpendicular to the lower leg, toes curled back and the arches turned inward. Muscles and tendons, when subjected to excess tensile strain, lose their elastic restoring force, much like a rubber band that once overstretched either snaps or loses its resiliency. By swinging the leg up, held straight, muscles are stretched dynamically as opposed to the static elongation produced by other methods. 
stretching in an upright position creates a better sense of balance, although for this side stretch, beginners are advised to hold onto a chair. Sustaining the hip back slightly, foot held in the side position allows the leg to swing higher. A state of equilibrium between all the antagonistic muscles which align our skeletal structure creates the balance essential to proper kicking. To develop muscular equilibrium, relax, elevate the knee and kick out straight, suspending the foot briefly upon full extension. Spring or bound is the correct origin of all kicking motion. The greater downward force of the toes against a lesser and opposite force in the ground produces an upward acceleration, the speed of which is determined by elastic strength in the arch of the foot. Without spring, kicks lose both speed and power. Skipping rope will help to develop spring. Circularity not only plays an important role in the motions of the universe, whether it be of suns, moons, planets or subatomic particles, it also forms the essence of a well-executed kick. Curved motion, unlike linear or straight line motion, which involves sharp changes in direction, requires the least amount of effort, which makes it structurally faster for kicking. Shortening the radius of curvature in any kick, much like cracking a whip, creates greater acceleration, while lengthening the radius imparts greater angular momentum. The pelvis may be divided along three axes. The first, or x-axis, runs horizontally from one hip to the other. Torque, or the mass acceleration around an axis, is increased by thrusting the hip explosively forward. The second, or y-axis, runs vertically through the center of the pelvis. Rotating the hips quickly around this axis generates power. The torso remains fixed, the waist elastic and flexible. The third, or z-axis, runs centrally between both hips from stomach to back. Motion along this axis lends to the kick the added momentum of the reverse half of the body. Hip thrust must be well-timed with spring to be effective. The human body may be described as having an imaginary line running through its central core, which we call the gravitational axis or center line. This is the line upon which the rotational forces of the body rest in balance. Force directed toward but short of the center line will have little effect on an opponent's equilibrium and may be deflected by his body rotation. Aiming a strike beyond an opponent's center line becomes a push, which upsets his equilibrium but reduces your force considerably due to improper distancing. The most effective way of striking is to transfer your entire force directly into the center line itself. Along a man's center line, the force of gravity increases when approaching his area of support, in this case, the ground. The point at which all forces, especially the effect of gravity act upon an object, is called the center of gravity, or balance point. In a human being, the center of gravity is located along the center line a few inches below the navel. Striking toward the center line transfers force against the center of gravity. However, a shallow strike shifts it only slightly. A push moves it laterally with little distortion, but a perpendicular strike displaces it violently. Of the eight basic kicks, the front kick, although appearing simple, is very often performed incorrectly. The weapon utilized is the ball of the foot in the straight position. To kick properly, spring your knee up high. Thrust forward with the hip, extending the foot out straight. Keep your kick side shoulder back while leaning slightly forward at the waist to maintain balance. Do not kick targets beyond the angle of the raised knee or swing the leg up, causing undue pressure upon the knee joint. Notice the kicking foot springs up in an arc, reaching the back of the thigh just prior to hip thrust. Observe the whip-like quality of the entire motion, a characteristic of any proper kick. Against an opponent, kick perpendicularly into his center line. Kicking at any other angle will deflect the force of impact.
The round kick is thrown most effectively with the knee leveled at peak elevation, no later than 135 degrees into the kicking arc of curvature. The weapons used are either the ball of the foot in the side foot position or the instep. To execute the kick, spring the knee up 90 degrees into the kicking arc. Rotate the hip inward, bringing the foot around horizontally, then return along the same path. Always twist your torso in an opposite direction to your leg momentum. Rotating the hip down quickly on its y-axis upon impact relieves pressure on the knee. Note that the knee of the fixed leg is bent slightly and the ball of the grounded foot turns outward. The key to the round kick lies in holding the hip back where it joins the thigh while keeping the torso vertical. Here we see the kick thrown in the extreme to an opponent's head. Beginners should avoid kicking above chest height. Most high kicks are less powerful and more easily blocked. The secret of a proper side kick lies in the fluid change of direction in hip rotation from its Y to Z axis. The weapon used should be the back knife edge of the foot. Spring the knee and thigh up perpendicular to the line of strike. Rotate the hip on its Z axis, extending the foot heel out straight. Retract and down. A direct line is formed as you sight down your hip to your heel and out towards the target. Relax the leg muscles, allowing your bound and hip to do the work. The grounded foot should have pivoted 180 degrees, toes facing backward at the time of full extension, in compensation for the hip's lateral thrust. It's important to avoid leaning the torso back or facing it down during any kick, in that the force of gravity will reduce strike momentum. Side kicks are especially effective against all sections of the rib cage. Observe proper distancing. Don't allow your strike to become a push. To develop power in the hook kick, which is sometimes referred to as a reverse roundhouse, a great deal of coordination is required. The weapon in this kick is the back of the heel. Bound into a cocked side kick position. Thrust the foot out straight in advance of the target, then rotate the kick hip outward, bringing the foot into the round kick position. In this kick, the hip describes an S pattern. First rotating inward on its Y axis, then forward on its Z axis, and outward again on its Y axis. The heel with the greatest impact snaps into the target just after the hip returns on its y-axis. The hook kick, like the round kick, holds the hip tucked back at the joint. The further back, the shorter the arc and greater the speed. The further forward, the longer the arc and greater the momentum. In kicking this opponent, notice how the kick side shoulder leads the strike and is pulled back upon contact. This torso action helps in creating greater angular momentum. The inside crescent kick depends, more so than with the previous kicks, upon the powerful springing motion of the foot off the ground. The main weapon is the inside ankle although the arch may be used in blocking either arms or legs. Bounce your knee up high towards your side, then quickly rotate your hip both forward and inward. The foot will naturally snap up and across into the target. There exists a counterclockwise twist in the torso against the motion of the kick. Notice the sudden acceleration in the hip just before the strike and that the grounded foot doesn't move. A strong yet flexible waist is an asset due to the great forces being applied by both torso and hip in opposite directions. This kick should be used at close range and can be executed effectively at only one thigh length from an opponent. The 
outside crescent kick is almost the reverse of the inside crescent kick, except that in this case, torso rotation assists the springing foot into position. The foot weapon utilized is the outside ankle. Spring the knee high across the torso, then rotate the hip outward. The kicking side shoulder jerks back rapidly just before the hip catches the motion. Each link in the chain of a kick is accelerated by the previous link, which is already moving around a highly accelerated fulcrum. Keep your kicking motion fluid, that is, your force must be applied evenly along all points in the motion. In kicking, every motion in the body should proceed as late as possible to take advantage of the acceleration of the preceding motion. At long distance, this kick is effective for blocking. At close distance, it's valuable for hitting to the head. The twist kick is complicated due to angular forces in the hip and leg traveling both perpendicularly and opposite to each other. Strike with the ball of the foot in a side foot position. As your knee springs up, your foot rotates in and upward while the hip pivots outwardly for the kick. What gives the motion its whip-like quality is the interaction of the angular momentums of both hip and foot, like two gears interlocked and rotating at 90 degrees to one another. Observe how opposite rotations in the hip swing the foot first inward, then upward into a strike, while keeping the foot's arc of curvature uniform. The torso, in the meantime, twists three times to lead the flow of motion. When striking in an arc parallel to the ground, this kick not only gets under an opponent's guard, but it's difficult to perceive as well. The hammer kick well lives up to its name, in that it is much like using an actual hammer. The weapon, in this case, is the back of the heel. The knee springs up across the torso, while the hip swings the foot up and down like a hammer. Thrown from an outside crescent kick position, the hip rotates first in on the y-axis, then up on the x-axis, out on the y-axis, and down on the x-axis. It's important to make full use of the power in the small of the back to drive the heel toward the ground. Notice that the last downward motion carries not only a shortened radius of curvature, but also the full force of gravity to give it acceleration. Against an opponent, the hammer kick is most effective for strikes to the top of the head, side of the neck and the collarbone. Executing any kick 360 degrees about the hip's y-axis of rotation is called a spinning kick. The weapon used for the spinning front kick is once again the ball of the foot held in a straight foot position. Pivot 180 degrees on your front foot, twist your torso, then spring the knee up to front kick. The transition from a large angular force about the hip's y-axis to a perpendicular force about its x-axis makes this a difficult kick. Pulling back on the kick's opposite shoulder just prior to the strike helps in the transition. Observe how the fixed leg acts as a brake, retarding the spin just enough to allow for the forward kick motion. To remain accurate as well as create impact, a tremendous sense of timing and balance is required. It's important to sight the target 90 degrees into the spin, so your head must twist around slightly faster than your shoulder. Perhaps the most challenging of all spinning kicks is the spinning round kick. Either the ball of the foot in a side foot position or the instep are used as weapons. Spin your torso, pivoting on your rear foot, knee up, hip thrust, and the kick. 
To retain balance and speed, the knee should reach its peak height 240 degrees through the spin. During the last split second acceleration of the hip, pull your kick side shoulder back. Notice how the rear foot pivots first on the heel, then on its ball to face forward. This type of two-point pivot increases speed and controls momentum. Circular force becomes formidable due to the body spinning a full 360 degrees before contact. Throwing a spinning round kick from a position to either side of an opponent makes it perceptually faster to that opponent. The spinning side kick may be considered a prime example of the precise control of body momentum. The knife edge of the foot is the weapon used. Pivot 180 degrees on your front foot, spin springing the foot up, hip thrust and kick. Bound allows the hip in rotating from its Y to Z axis to accelerate faster than the spinning torso. Notice how the kick side shoulder pulls against the spin during thrust. Your kicking foot should pass in a straight line close to your fixed leg with the heel aimed towards the target. Always retain a vertical position during the spin, otherwise both your angular momentum and gravity will drive your torso downward. The foot must travel in a straight line to the target. By combining the large torque of its spin with thrust in the hip, the spinning hook kick carries the greatest power. The back of the heel is used in striking. Pivot on your forward foot, spin springing the rear foot into a high cock position, extend the leg, swing across and down. Thrust your hip out as in a side kick, just as your heel comes 12 inches away from its target. Keep your torso up and the kick leg parallel to the ground throughout the entire motion. Your foot should spring up slightly more distant from the fixed leg than in a spinning side kick. The key to power lies in the quick snapping action of the leg as the hip rotates from its wide...